What's happening everyone? My name is Anthony Santana. Welcome back to The Letter. This is part 8 and we are now in Zack's story, chapter 3. In the previous episode we finished up uh, the rest of, um, what was her name? I already forgot. Hannah. We finished the rest of Hannah's story with Luke and now we're here. So the pleasant aroma hits me long before I cross the threshold. Faint but light and warm, I rem a reminder of what home is. Pa's stern but condemning gaze, Ma's stern, sm uh, stern. Ma's tender smiles, the sunlight filtering through the eaves in the morning, and the distinct smell of cinnamon and vanilla as it drifts through the air every time something crooks from the room. Cooks from the room. The room, our room, Ma and Pa's pride and joy. My sister and I too, eventually. But we ain't allowed there. Not yet. Not until we're taller or older. Not until we've learned how to take care of ourselves and not burn our hands, or reach the cupboards without having to be lifted. But a little peek wouldn't hurt, yeah? The floorboards are cold under my feet, more than it usually is. The walls more forbidding than what I'm used to. Farther and farther the room goes. Ma's singing seizes and pa. No, please wait! What is going on? I'll be good. I'll sleep on time. Is he having Don't a nightmare? I think he might be having a nightmare. I can't hear Pa. <laughs> Jesus. Not above the racious uh, or raucous clanging and the deafening roar of gunshots, nor the screams replacing the comforting soft melodies. There is only the blinding fear. When my foot slips, the red sea that catches me is bitter and frigid, but the blood that drips in my hand is warm, warm, warm. It ain't my blood. The walls tumble and everything goes quiet. Yeah, he was having a nightmare. It takes a few moments for everything to fall into place, for my eyes to adjust to the, uh, the relative darkness of the room. Either he was having a nightmare or he was having a flashback, a memory. So that was a memory, that fucking sucks. Despite the pleasant chill of the AC, uh, the AC brings, uh, my shirt is clinging tightly to me and my blanket is tangled a tangled mess around my throat. Morning has not yet even arrived. And yet. <sighs> Way too early for this thing, man. And too long. Too long since the last I've woken up drenched in my own sweat, head littered with thoughts that are, go uh, that are gone as soon as my eyes open. So it's not the first time, but it's been a while since he's had a nightmare. All too often, only imprints and brief images are left to haunt me for the rest of the day, or until my mind forgets about it. A gad. Whatever comes first. What is that? Yet vivid or not, what little I can remember does not matter. Regardless, the desperation sticks, clawing up, pushing, urging me to re relive every moment, every sensation, and... So that actually might have happened. There's a twinkle in Ma's eyes when she looks up from her work, flower dusting her, flower dusting her nose and cheeks. The scent of freshly baked bread wafts from the oven as soon as Pa opens it, and the homely fragrance of honey fills the room. He reaches up to wipe the small beads of sweat away from his forehead before gesturing for me to come closer uh, the moment he spots me on my little hiding place behind the door. I expected him to be angry, but his pat on my back when I come within his arm's reach is encouraging enough. We'll have to uh, we'll have to taste test these first before we put it up for sale tomorrow. You up for it, little man? Is it good enough? A knock cuts out. A knock cuts through the air before I can answer. Sharp, heavy, demanding, familiar. So distinct, so distantly familiar. Ma ushers me out the kitchen when Pa moves to answer it. But I know. I know what awaits outside. The taste of blood in my mouth sends an unpleasant churning in my gut. Ma's apron crinkles under my tight grip. Something snaps me back into place. Yeah, so that actually happened, it seems. My bed remains in utter disarray. The walls still need a new paint job, and the wall clock ticking opposite my bed is as unsettling as ever. Ash is right. I should have already replaced that when I had the chance. You're no longer there, Zachary. Here and there, a miles apart. Calm down. Breathe. 
The pressure of my own fingers against my temple is welcome sensation over the anxiety gripping over me. Also, what kind of building is he in? Because looking at the window on the left and the right, it, it looks odd. Like, I can't really get my head around the blueprint of the building. Like, is it just like one giant one long strip of building that goes up and it's only one room per floor? That sort of seems like. It never really did anything to stave off the headache sure to follow after this, after this before, but it grounds me. A little reminder that I am safe, away from the place I once called home, from Ma and Pa's. The urgency with each rap that follows uh, finally chases away the ghost, threatening to hang around. Why anyone thinks it's a good idea to knock at someone else's door this late confuses me. Nana will chase them away uh, with a broom if she was here. But no matter. It's a welcome break from the thoughts about to take a morbid turn if left festering. It's probably just Ash anyway, looking for a place to uh, freeload. Crash. Looking for a place to crash. Wonder, wonder of wonders why he's bothering with the courtesy when he even did so before when he never did so before. Even with that hunch, though, habit compels me to check who it is uh, first through the peephole. Better safe than sorry, they say. Except the person that greets me on the other side ain't him. Unless his hair grew longer overnight, and he started wearing a ponytail, of course, which I highly doubt will happen anytime soon, no matter how funny that looks in my head. I waste no time opening the latches. Could it be, uh... What's her name? Our main protagonist. I already forgot. Isabella. Isabella? It is! It's late. And why is she so scared? There's something I can't quite pinpoint in her eyes when she looks up. Her face a pallid shade, shoulders tense, breathing heavy, and an uncontrollable shaking in her hands. She's trying to hold back. Hide if I know any better. If I didn't know any better. Hey, Zach. Sorry. I, I know it's weird for me to show up at this hour, but... You are the closest to my office, and... Oh, this is right after... Okay, so right after she... Uh, right after the first chapter. No, 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 no. It's perfectly fine. I, I'm not really working on anything right now. Do you want to come in? Is it... Is it all right? I know you should be sleeping at this hour, but I thought... I'm sorry, I, I just thought... I have no idea why I went here. My feet just moved on their own after I got out of the office, and... and... Sorry. She trails off, her voice lost in, an, uh, in the muggy night air. I wait for her to say more, but instead her only response is downward shift of her gaze. Back to her still trembling hands as if the motion alone is enough of an explanation. A minuscule gesture. Easy to miss if one is not paying attention. But for someone who has seen the same expression on the mirror, done the same thing too many times when night terrors are inevitable, it is not. Hey, hey, don't worry about it. At least you not. Ash just bodges in and crashes on the couch whenever he feels like it. I swear that guy is one fine hairline away from being a criminal. <laughs> for being a detective? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without waiting for her answer, I step away from the door and saunter over the, uh, the kitchenette. For a few good seconds, only the clicking of the plates can be heard above the constant tick-tock. Late as it may be for a snack, the familiar motions keep me occupied, steering my mind away from dangerous, dangerous thoughts. Isabella's company is not unwelcome, either. Whatever her reasons for showing up here at, at such an hour doesn't matter. I'll be damned if I just turn her away, frazzled as she is. Yeah, let's not turn her away. The door clicks shut behind her when she finally enters. Feet scuffling softly against the tiled floor. In all the years I've known her, she has never once lost her ever upbeat spirit. Yet in this particular moment, she, as she stands in my doorway, holding her arms close to herself. It's as if I'm looking at someone completely withdrawn from the person I've come to know all these years. Do you want to drink or eat anything? I haven't restocked my food stash yet, so ingredients may be a bit limited. But I'm sure I can whip something up with what I have here. Just water will do, please. Thanks, Zack. What? No additional food requests? That's new. I'll put something together for you anyway. Aw, oh, he's being considerate. Hey, feel free to make yourself at home. You ain't exactly a new visitor here. 
Although my room's not at its most presentable right now. Sorry. Uh, new freelance gigs and such. Didn't have time to fix things up here lately. Now, could this part of the story... Uh, I could actually just check it right here on the journal, can't I? No, because nothing has actually happened yet. So we still don't know when this takes place. It might have said uh, when the chapter started, but I didn't really pay much attention. It's okay. I don't mind. But I'm thinking this takes place... It definitely takes place after the first chapter. But in, re in regards to the second chapter, it's got to take place after taking the pictures for the Wright's Mansion. I'm assuming. Usually she'd have something more to say about that. A quip, a witty remark to provoke a laughter or two. Nothing from her this time. Only a weak smile before she takes a seat on the couch, and a silence that stretches out until what we left hanging feels dis uh, disconcerting. Before everything turns stifling and awkward, I continue talking, if only to keep the dead air at bay. How is one supposed to keep a conversation going when the person you're talking to is like this? <clears throat> uh, anyway, um, gigs. <laughs> Can you believe this one client we got? Boss had all my schedules shoot shifted after they caught wind of this couple buying a new property. Man, must be nice to have all the money in the world. Yep, seems like I'm correct about when this takes place. The world itself moves for you, huh? She's curled up on one side of the couch and hugging her knees close when I bring the tray carrying the sandwiches and the water she requested. You know, I want a sandwich right now. I should go make one after this recording. She starts to straighten up as I'm unloading the contents, but pauses as soon as I hold up my hand in a halting gesture. You're a guest! Didn't I say you're free to make yourself at home? She's not really feeling comfortable. I mean, are you sure you're trying to lighten the mood, but... Maybe right now the mood is, uh, needs to be understood before it can be lightened. Here's your water. Careful. The tremor in her hands, though lighter now, still hasn't subsided when she reaches out for the glass. I have her questioning look. I gave her a questioning look, but she is quick to avert her eyes, keeping herself occupied by taking small gulps of water. Or maybe she just doesn't want me asking questions. Worrying. This sudden loss for words, this bout of quiet, not normally present in our chats. Even the creaking of the old chair when I casually take the seat is a welcome break. Although the company is familiar, this has gone way past unnerving. What happened? Overtime at work? She doesn't answer immediately. Another gulp drains her glass of its remaining contents. One would think it, would, it will be enough to help her recover, yet she doesn't lose her taut grip on the glass as she cradles it on her lap. Her eyes take an unfocused gaze when she speaks again. I... yeah. Boss handed me extra work today. After... After what happened to Rose. Right, yeah, I forgot Rose. How is it that she was gone again? I don't remember. I don't recall it being murder. I think it was just an accident that happened. I don't remember. I have to look back on the footage. Rose, why do I feel like you've mentioned her before? Sorry, I'm better with remembering faces than names. She's... was... She was my co-worker. That will take some getting used to. I was just talking to her the other day. Was? Did she resign or something? I, I think I'm missing a few details here, Bella. You've never met her. I think I did mention her once, or twice. It doesn't matter. You probably heard her name recently from the news than me. Something clicks then. A little memory from the night before. The bright red light from the dark room, the strange odor of the stop bath, the television's barely audible murmur in the background, and a glimpse of a bloody room. The news is everywhere, even in the mornings that follow. I just didn't think its effect will strike someone this close to me. Oh yeah, I think the, the spirit got to her, but she didn't see the- yeah, she did see the letter. Yeah, she did. Oh. Damn. I, I, I didn't mean to bring that up. No, I... like I said, it'll take some getting used to, but it'll get better. I hope it will. Things might become a little busier for me, though. She left a lot of things unfinished. 
And I'm one of the few people in the office who knows how she works. Boss thinks the transition will be easier if I handle it. Ah, uh, that explains it. Well, just don't forget you still need rest. Even the most hard-working people I know don't keep hours as late as this. Hell, the subway stopped running hours ago. Crime rate might be lower here than most places, but that doesn't mean you can walk around freely in the middle of the night. He's right, you know. It's just for today. Still a good thing you drop by here first. I'm not just about to let you walk out here alone, especially not in the middle of the night. Who knows what else could happen? I'm not saying you should go right now, but I could accompany you home if you... N no! Wait, please! She doesn't want to go home either. Did something happen at her house too? Oh man, things I'm missing out on because I didn't rewatch the previous episodes. The vehement tension in her voice makes me pause, and it is in this instant that the mask she's been keeping up falls apart, if only for a short while. Right then and there, I understood uh, what's hiding behind her unfocused stare from the moment she arrived. Fear. Pure, un unadulterated fear. It's disturbing to see such uh, marriage at her... Such marriage her... What? It's disturbing to see such marriage her usual upbeat con countenance. I do not know, like, three of those, two of those words. <laughs> With a sigh, I cross the small distance separating us and kneel in front of her. She doesn't flinch when I do so. However, they say she appears to make herself, the way she appears to make herself smaller against the couch is telling enough. Bella, this ain't just about your co-worker, is it? What is it really about? I'm all ears. The sound of glass shattering rents through the air as soon as, uh, her hold on it loosens. Oh, she's that scared. In the span of a few seconds, her breathing grows labored. I don't know. I don't know anymore. She claps her hands over her ears, pressing it tightly against the sides of her head. Her voice grows weaker with each word, each plea coming out of her mouth. Please, please don't leave me alone. I don't want to be alone right now. I can't shake it off. Everywhere it's... Everywhere's not safe and... Hide, hide, Isabella. Look at me. Look at me. My hands are firm on her shoulder when I pull her up to look at me. It takes every force of will to ignore the terror in her eyes in favor of taking control over of the situation. Too close, too similar. Breathe. Breathe. You're safe here. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Stay in the present. I'm here. No one's gonna hurt you. Do you want to talk about it? The force with which she shakes her head is enough reason to drop the topic altogether. No more. Please. No more. I don't want... I don't want to remember anymore. Kate, okay, no more talking. I won't ask any more. Can I get you anything? Another glass of water? I think I have a tub of that pistachio ice cream you love so much. Uh, we're gonna have to clean this mess first. Will you be fine on your own for a little while? She nods lightly before retreating into herself again. No more words are exchanged after that, and I take that as my cue to start cleaning the shards littering the floor before either one of us get hurt. The quiet helm of the AC is a pleasant distraction as I go over the menial task. More so than her ragged draws of breath, uh, uh, or my little feeble attempts to tell a quick story or two. But the latter does the trick. And soon enough, she has already drifted off by the time I return with a promised glass of water, her chest rising and falling in a steady rhythm, the strain on her shoulders gone. Oh good, she fell asleep. Frankly, I've never seen her this still. She mumbles something I don't quite catch when I carry her to the empty bed, and hugs herself tighter against the mess of blankets. In spite of the fact that she appears relaxed, the small frown on her face hasn't quite disappeared. Whatever happened to her won't be leaving her anytime soon. Zack is a very good guy. Seriously, just... A friend walks into, or comes to his apartment uh, in a panic, scared, and he just offers everything, even his own bed. But for her sake, I hope it won't stay long with her. There are still questions left to be answered. But the late hour... 
coupled with the sudden exhaustion, made my cold, um, made my old couch a more comfortable bed than it typically is. Darkness immediately welcomes me as soon as my head hits my makeshift pillow. Let's check out the journal. What's it say? Fright and Isabella uh, knocked at Zach's place uh, in the middle of the night, shaken, refused to say what happened. Zach lets her stay regardless. Yeah, good guy, Zach. I can only wish the dreams will keep at a distance for now. For both of us. October 25th, mm. Tuesday. The first few notes, while muffled, are enough to wake me. In the end, it became one of those nights when sleep passes like a blink and is plagued with vague, fuzzy thoughts. I lift a hand to rub away the drowsiness from my eyes, although it does little to relieve the gritty, burning sensation from my eyelids. Outside, the sun has yet to peek over the horizon, but nothing has already given way to the cool morning light, washing everything in subtle gray hues. At this hour, the entire city remains unstirring. Ordinarily, waking up before my own alarm means abusing the snooze button twice or thrice just to catch those precious few extra minutes of sleep. I share that with you. But the persistent ringing makes it impossible now. <clears throat> this better be good. Groggily, I scramble for the bag sitting at the foot of the bed. The ringing hasn't stopped even as I fish the phone out, and Ashton's name flashes brightly on the screen when I turn it on. Must be pretty urgent if he hasn't uh, dropped the call yet. Took you long enough, Z-Man. Ashton is six. <sighs> six in the morning. Sun hasn't even risen. Hell, my brain ain't even awake yet. Well, by the looks outside those windows, how can you not be awake at the break of dawn? <laughs> Seriously, so much natural light just comes in. And also, it's it's sunny, so you're wrong. The sun has risen. Stop calling me Z-Man. It's 20 past six, Zach. You want to talk? Get back my five extra minutes, Ash. I want my sleep. Hey, don't make fun of me. I can be a, a more a person, too, if I want to. <laughs> Sounds like you're struggling with that, Ash. <laughs> What's this all really about? You don't usually make calls around this hour. Is the world ending today? <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, hey. Hi, kitty. How you doing? My brother's cat just came into my room. Might hear the bells jingling. That's if he doesn't jump onto my bed, which it looks like he's about to do. Anyways. Becca rang me up a few minutes ago looking for Isabella. Said she didn't show up in her own apartment last night. We both tried calling, but her phone seems to be off. Her phone might actually be at the office. With that kind of scare, <laughs> I would probably leave my phone too if uh, if I had a, a chance to run. Do you have any idea where... <laughs> I should have known you two would come looking for her first thing in the morning. Not a laughing matter, Zach. You can't really let your guard down with everything that's happened here recently. You've heard about the Cooper woman from the news. Everyone in the precinct has been restless ever since the incident the other day. Yeah, I get what you mean. Listen, Ash... About... about Bella. She's here. She's safe. I let my voice trail off, unsure of how to go about uh, recounting last night. If I should even say anything to him. He might be a close friend, but at the end of the day, whatever's bothering her ain't mine to speak of in the first place. On the bed, Isabella remains as still as when I transferred her the night before. Sometime during her sleep, she pulls up a blanket over herself and tucked into it comfortably. Like this, it's easy to forget the horror in her eyes, or how much her hands and lips trembled. Save for her uh, firm grip on the edge of the covers, she appears nearly as normal as she would any other day. Almost. I'm not really sure how to go about this while being... Zach, what about her? Something. The worry, the concern, must have surfaced in my tone because... His own shifts then. Just say, she's safe. Carefully as he's preparing for the worst. Look, you don't have to worry about her. She's with me right now. Since last night, in fact. There you go. Oh, why didn't you just say so earlier? She kind of knocked in the middle of the night. I couldn't possibly wake you two over that. And with how things are when she arrived, I thought it'd be best if I let her rest first. 
I just wasn't expecting people would be looking for her before the rooster even crows. You could have at least called her something. Becca's beside herself with worry when she found out. You know how much she frets about the smallest stuff. I know, I know. I'm sorry. That was a lapse on my part. And I just didn't think... Okay, you know what? Rebecca's worries ain't completely baseless. Wait, is he changing his tone? Isabella hasn't been her usual self since the movie. Maybe even before that. Yeah, he did slightly change his tone. I don't know if I should be open about that. Uh-oh. Oh, well, looks like that whole sentence got cut by the stream delay. I don't know if I should be opening my mouth about this, but Bella ain't, didn't outright say I shouldn't, so... So something's wrong, then? I'm not quite sure, to be completely honest. I couldn't get the story out of her. Really? I thought you'd learned something from me by now. That's not it. Ash, when she appeared at my doorstep last night, she was shaking, and, and when I tried to ask her about it, she just panicked. Had this frightened look on her face. I'd be surprised if this was the first time I've seen it, but it ain't. Dude, the first time, she was screaming. First time? When was this? You weren't talking about the thing in the movie house, are you? Because that was just us fooling around. Granted, I think I went overboard with the joke, but... No, it happened the day after. When she invited us to lunch, you weren't there. We were walking one second, and then the next, she's crying out. Oh yeah, I remember that. I'll be straight with you. That scared me shitless. It bothered him, if the way he falls silent after is telling. But whatever his opinion is, stays absent from his voice when he speaks again. He's always been good at, with that, hiding what he thinks. Did she say anything else? Nothing. Won't tell me anything aside from a few vague words. I didn't want to push it. Where is she? Is she still sleeping? Right here with me, still sleeping. Should I wake her up or something? Let her know you guys are looking for her? No, just let her sleep. No need. Let her rest. I'll drop by in a few. Today? Don't you have work at this time? I mean, I can drop her off home myself before meeting my client later. Who <laughs> keeps talking? My schedule's flexible, Ash. Last time I checked, you're the one who didn't have that luxury. How on earth do you think I'm able to tag along when you need me? It's not completely out of the way. They live on the other side of the town from you, Ash. Your definition of out of the way is a little screwed up, you know. It's fine. I have some things I need to do anyway. I'll call you back. I've got to let Becca know that Scared Cat's fine. Bye. <laughs> oh, now's not the time for, for messing around like that, Ash. He drops the call before I can even get a word in, and for several minutes after, I find myself simply listening as the rest of Luxburn rouses. Let's check out the journal. Uh, da -da -da, this one. Uh, come morning, Zach received a phone call from Ash, who is looking for Isabella. Zach informed him that she stayed over before the end. Before ending the call, Ash offered to pick her up. Good guy, Ash. The increasing sound of passing traffic, the bustle of the nearby uh, shops preparing for the day, and the growing clamor of the uh, people while they go about their morning. Not the most soothing sounds to hear following a troubled night, but the routine puts me at ease, nevertheless. What's comforting, what's safe, what I'm used to. Nearby, Isabella shifts but doesn't wake, blissfully unaware as the city slowly stirs itself back to life. Was her night as restless as the one I had? Were her dreams as lucid? In hushed moments like this, I envy her. Unreasonable, probably a little unfair, to say such in, a, in light of last night. If only forgetting is as easy as breathing. Mm. A small yawn escapes me when I rise from the couch to stretch. Luckily, the short conversation with Ash has effectively driven away any will to go back to bed. I still have a day to go to get through, despite uh, the proverbial ghosts hanging around. The orange bottle sitting at the edge of my table is reassuring against my palm the instant I pick it up. The sterile odor of the capsules, equally so. Hopefully that medication is not for anything serious. Yet the weight they carry is something I've never gotten used to. Years ago I'd spend minutes, heck even hours, staring at a single pill prior to taking one in. Now it's just a routine, a way to stave off uh, unwanted nightly visits. Sleeping pills? 
although I don't think uh, Dr. Navarro will be quite pleased if he ever finds out I'm relying on them again. I do owe him a vast... I do owe him a visit, regardless, especially after missing our appointments on purpose and ignoring uh, his calls for weeks. Another sigh comes out, tired and weary, and then I pop the tablet into my mouth. That's not a sleepy. That's not a sleeping pill, then. Zach, what time is it? Hey, she's awake. The bottle in my hand hits the table with more force than necessary. As much as I trust my friends, there are some things I'd rather keep to myself. Morning, Bella. Did you sleep well? She answers the question with a long, drawn-out yawn, one reminiscent of a child. <laughs> a chuckle manages to come out of my mouth at the sight. In this manner, it's easy to mistake her for someone too young for her responsibilities. Inexperienced and yet immature, even. Easy to forget she was uh, thrust into the role of an adult earlier than her own dreams can afford, to overlook how surprisingly observant she can be at, at times. Maybe not on the same level, Ash exercises for his investigations, or Rebecca needs for her own work. But it's clearly enough to deftly uh, put what she sees around her on canvas. And if the way her eyes flickers uh, to the table and my hand says something, it is that I won't be able to avoid the questions at this time. Only a little. I don't remember how I ended up on the bed, though. My doing. You didn't look very comfortable sleeping on the couch. All hunched up like that. It would have been enough for something temporary. Sorry I stole your bed. Hey, it doesn't matter. Besides, what kind of gentleman would I be if I leave a lady sleeping in such uncomfortable conditions? Exactly. Good guy, Zach. Not in this house. My nana would give me a tough scolding if I ever did that, I'm telling you. Thanks a lot, Zach. I know I barged in at a very inconvenient time last night. I... I wasn't really thinking when I did, and... Hey, hey, it's cool, Bella. I ain't mad at you. That's what friends do. You guys are welcome here anytime. Although Ashen abuses the anytime part a lot. I don't really mind. <laughs> we might have less wiggle room if all four of us are present, considering the size of this place. But as long as no one makes anything explode, it's totally fine. Fine or not, I still owe you one for last night's trouble. Especially since you don't seem to be... A concerned expression passes over her uh, features as she spares another cursory glance over the table, back to the bottle holding every small piece of what keeps the bad memories at bay. The blood blooming over Pa's heart, the horrified look on Ma's face as she watches him fall lifeless to the ground, and every ounce of spite seeing from the stranger's smile. You don't belong here. You monkeys don't belong here. Did the stranger say that? That's racist. It never stops, doesn't it? Well, you don't seem to be feeling well. Let me know, okay? I'll make it up to you somehow. She makes a slight gesture with her head towards the bottle, asking a question without really asking. Subtlety has never been one of her greatest assets, but right now, even Ash would have been a little amused, if not at a loss for words at that. Or amazed, not amused. Uh... She has left it up to me whether I'll, get, I'll ever give her the response she wants to hear or not. Uh, let's tell her the truth. We're good friends with her. Let, let's be open. But it's never easy, ain't it? Oh, wow. That actually bumped up the relationship with Isabella a lot. Talking about my own problems, that is. It will never be, not by a long shot. Not when I've let it stay this way for so long. I, re I realized that long ago, when the wounds are still fresh and the dreams are a nightly occurrence, you can't force yourself to get better or move on to better things. It's what normal, it's what, it is what's normal now, and I can only cope. The question in her eyes may be unwarranted, born simply out of curiosity and sincere concern for a friend. I don't owe her an explanation, in fact. But of all the people I close in my life, I keep close in my life. She's probably one of the very few who perhaps I can trust with this. Maybe she won't understand entirely. I can never hope she will. No, never to the full extent. That alone is expecting too much of her, and giving too much of what I can. However, for all her shortcomings, I know she'll hear me out. And that is all I can ask of her.
My bad. I was kind of hoping you wouldn't have seen me with these. The pills rattle lightly against the container when I gently set it back to its usual place. Always a small area closet to my laptop. <laughs> Always a small area closest to my laptop, near the right hand. Within reach whenever, whenever and a quiet reminder of what I shouldn't miss every day. What? Oh, is it bad? I was just thinking that maybe it's a cold like Becca's. Do you need me to get anything from the store? Soup or something? There's one nearby, right? I can run real quick and... No, nothing of that sort. I'm perfectly healthy right now. It's really difficult to say, but... Can you promise me you'll listen at least? What is this about, Zack? I should have been up front with you about this a long time ago. But Ashton found out without me telling him anything. But you already know how that guy is. Can't hide anything from him. If it's something you're having trouble saying, you don't have to force yourself to tell me. I'll forget I ever saw anything and won't ask questions. Promise. Well, sometimes that's not the best. No, I need to get this off my chest eventually. Besides, we're already here. Might as well finish what I started, yeah? If you say so. She takes a seat back on the couch. Uh, her posture easy and open, and her smile honest. It's as it, uh, as if this is just a simple talk between two friends on a regular day. It is far from one, but her unreserved air is enough to stamp down the twinge of unease that threatens to come up. Let's hear it then. And I think that's where I'm going to end the episode. So, in the next episode we'll hear about Zack's backstory and uh, what is up with those nightmares, even though we can pretty much already... Um, we already understand what is up with the nightmares. But we'll leave that for him to explain in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.